when we look at the chariot itself, the chariot represents the body itself. So your body. And inside the chariot is seated the true self, the Atman, the master. So the true nature of our own existence, that undifferentiated consciousness that we speak about a lot in Eastern philosophy, that's the master of the chariot, right? And that's within all of us, actually unified as one. And then we have the charioteer, which is the buddhi. Now the buddhi is the determinative faculty, what you would call the universal intelligence. The buddhi can be developed, it often is developed in your spiritual practice. And we all have the buddhi, but a lot of us have an undeveloped buddhi because we don't have any self-control, which we will talk about in a minute. And then the next part of the chariot is the mind. Now the mind is the reins, the reins of the charioteers. So the buddhi is holding the reins, the mind, controlling in some sense, the mind. And next part is obviously we have horses which moves the chariot which represents the senses that we have the senses also the roads along which the vehicle moves around will represent the objects which will be more like a reality and the things that we get tempted by which triggers the senses which triggers horses so the external world is what yes. we're kind of talking about, isn't it? Like in the externality of the mental and physical planes of consciousness that we all experience, which is the sensorium, right? That yes. is how our senses interact with the external world. Yes. So as you said, these are the roads that we travel along. And the whole point of this is about self-control. We find in especially not just Eastern spiritual traditions, but specifically Vedanta itself, part of the discipline is self-control. But yes. also in Taoism and Buddhism as well, you need to have certain level of restraint and self-control to guide your chariot towards the goal, which we'll talk about later. So self-control is very important. And this is what the chariot actually is there for us to use. It's a tool to understand self-control and the roads that we need to go down in an effortless manner. Again, the, as you mentioned, self-control is most foundational faculty on the path of self-realization. And again, especially in Vedanta, they emphasize even more, they regard as a restlessness, the restless mind as like inferior state of mind. So which is obviously the lack of self-control, which creates a lot of confusion within our mind. So again, this restlessness is somewhat at times in every one of us nowadays, right? We are constantly exposed to outside uh, distractions. So we easily get distracted by these things so that we become restlessness. Our mind is always running 100 miles an hour. Again, this is to be regarded as inferior state of mind in Vedanta mm. study. So that's something I think we need to kind of remind ourselves when we kind of lose our control a little bit, right? Well, that's what the vrittis are, right? The vrittis in Sanskrit are the whirlpools within our mind so it's the mental activity that is circulating within our mind where we're agitated causing restlessness where we have no ability to have equanimity and clarity to see the world as it truly is and to understand ourselves as it truly is because we get caught in the whirlpool we all do right that's the nature of the mind the nature of the mind is to be turbulent but the real nature of the mind is empty spontaneous and free but we identify with this mental activity, this whirlpool, and then we become restless. Yes. And you can see this in the actions of people. They might be tapping their feet or tapping the table. They're constantly thinking, you know. Always listening something, right? Yes. That's only feeding the agitation. Yeah. So if you always got your headphones on or you're always watching something, you're feeding that agitation, those vrittis, you're causing, you're actually inculcating more vrittis. We need to find methods and practices to counter this, right? So again, as we've spoken numerous times on the podcast, emptying the mind of the content, worldliness, desires is the first step in the process of guiding the chariot in the right direction. Mm -hmm instead of just letting the horses run here and there due to the external world. And that's what what's happening, right, with the vrittis. It's almost like the buddhi has let go of the reins and just said... Yeah, 
Yeah, rain is already out of your hands and just horses just running around whatever they see on the road, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's exactly what's happening in a lot of us in our normal like, kind of state of mind, right? Like we just let ourselves be bombarded by so much outside distractions. But meanwhile, our intelligent faculty not trying to do anything so being literally lazy a little bit there yeah. so we just kind of yeah losing our control well that's how we become so addicted to the senses right like this is why we see with people they're always eating something or drinking something usually that's not healthy for them a lot of people don't eat with moderation so moderation is a big part of eastern spirituality right like of having just enough but not eating too much that puts your system out of balance or feeds the horses so to speak so they run here there and everywhere so the world that we are designing is to stimulate these horses to stimulate the senses and so the key aspect within vedanta and yoga is prachahara is the withdrawal of the senses yes. so if you have a developed buddhi who has strong control of the mind the reins he can pull the reins and halt the the horses so to speak so that's kind of the withdrawal of the senses mm -hmm. and that's a core part of spiritual practice not just within vedanta and yoga but with also within buddhism and Taoism.